We've come a long way from wax on and wax off, but never too far from the all-important All-Valley Under-18 Karate Championship. Adults working out their differences via regional youth karate championships is a fertile field of drama as Cobra Kai Season 4 hits Netflix and further explores the ramifications of Daniel LaRusso's attempts to fit into the karate-obsessed valley a generation later. Bouncing back and forth between fun and poignant, interviews with the cast reveal some of the fun and challenges that went into this nostalgia fudge Sunday. While Cobra Kai has some things to say about the relationship between mentors and students, and the lasting effects of those relationships on both the student and the teacher, at its core, Cobra Kai is still a fun comedy that lives in a world where rival karate schools regularly rumble and high-stakes bets revolve around an annual karate tournament. But it's also a karate show, and that comes with stunt work. Not just for the tournament fights, but also some of the training sequences. And that's especially true for the students of Eagle Fang, whose sensei has a pretty loose understanding of things like child endangerment and risks of injury. Regardless of all that, the cast all go through daily training in the martial arts, as well as assistance from their stunt teams, so that the actors can be the ones on camera as often as possible. In an interview with BuzzFeed, Samantha LaRusso actor Mary Mouser said the actors do about 60% of their own stunts, with the more dangerous stuff left to the professionals. Namely, she was able to do the run-up and the landing for the ill-advised building jump part of the Eagle Fang training, but the actual in-air part was done by her stunt double Selkie Hom. Pathetic! The young cast of Cobra Kai, who are who the rival senseis work their issues out with, don't carry their dojo rivalries into real life, all getting along. Though in a group interview, it was accidentally revealed that Mouser had forgotten to include Dimitri actor Johnny DiCenzo to the group chat. Once a Dimitri, always a Dimitri. We won't forget you, buddy. Mouser and the other kids arranged to prank Hawk actor Jacob Bertrand on set, even involving hair and makeup. Mouser had her makeup artist give out a scream and run from the chair when Bertrand was near. The actor assumed it was something like a lizard getting into the room or something, but discovered a passed out Mouser. Now, the plan was to jump scare the actor when he approached her, but he never did. Instead, he assumed that she passed out as a result of her diabetes and kept imploring her castmates for help, including Tory actor Peyton List, who was filming at the time. Well, at least they know he cares. The action of Cobra Kai takes place in the same setting as the original Karate Kid trilogy in the San Fernando Valley, just over the hill from Hollywood and the rest of Los Angeles. You know, it's home to Disney, Warner Brothers, Universal Studios. It became famous for its unique, like, oh my god slang in the 80s. Anyway, despite it being in the 30 Mile Zone, the 30 miles that surround the production center that people think of as Hollywood, incidentally, that's what TMZ stands for, Production for Cobra Kai happens in Atlanta, where tax breaks and its own film and TV infrastructure has lured productions big and small. And while Atlanta can also have hot summers that rival the hot summers of the valley, that wasn't the weather conditions they were filming under at the beginning of 2021, including when they filmed the prom after party at Stingray's mom's house. After party at the house of a grown man who hangs out with karate teenagers? Strangely, not the worst decision the kids have made in the series. It was actually pretty cold for the filming of that sequence that included members of the cast ending up in the swimming pool, including Peyton List's Cannonball. Co-creator John Hurwitz praised the cast on Twitter after the show's release for acting like they were in sunny LA during the cold Atlanta winter. Samantha actor Mary Mouser might be appropriately named. Not because that's the perfect name for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle villain who's taken Baxter Stockman's Mouser robots and reprogrammed them for her own nefarious means and... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> where were we? Well, it turns out that she has another obsession with the House of Mouse. Between scenes, she was noted by other cast members that she had a penchant for singing Disney songs. Peyton List commented during a cast interview that it would make it difficult to attack her co-star when just moments ago she had been singing Do You Wanna Build a Snowman? Her experiences on Cobra Kai have shifted her loyalties a bit. In an interview with BuzzFeed, she said that before Cobra Kai, she would have preferred to end up as a Disney princess, but now would prefer ending up as a Jedi. She could go the Leia Organa route and be both. 
Depending on how deep into Karate Kid lore you are, or the history of Okinawan martial arts, it might surprise you to know that the movie was a semi-autobiographical take from the movie's creator, who had taken karate to deal with bullies, first from an aggressive Cobra Kai-style instructor, then from a Japanese instructor of Koju Ryu, a style developed by Chojin Miyagi. Despite this connection to both the real-world Okinawan martial art, as well as the real-world Mr. Miyagi, Karate Kid and, by extension, Cobra Kai has always been more of a fairy tale take on the world of suburban American karate. The students don't necessarily practice Koju Ryu, but Miyagi Do Karate and Cobra Kai Karate. This means that the training that some of the actors receive is specific to the style of fighting that happens in the show. For example, Jacob Bertrand, as the lanky Eli, or Hawk depending on where he is in his arc, did a lot of Muay Thai training to develop his knee and elbow strikes. Now, one of the key elements they developed for the Karate Kid franchise was the special technique that Mr. Miyagi would teach Daniel-san that would not only help him defeat his new bullies, but also give him a valuable life lesson. Now, the infamous crane kick gave way to a technique demonstrated by a hand drum in Karate Kid 2, and the kata became the big move in Karate Kid 3. Katas are a series of karate moves specifically choreographed for either practice or demonstration and are a big part of tournaments, even ones that aren't settling local rivalries. Season 4 saw the All Valley add a kata competition to their roster, which included teaching Samantha how to use the sai, a pair of forked weapons developed from Okinawan farm tools. Come on, it's the preferred weapon of a particular teenage turtle who has a penchant for wearing red? Anyway, given the narrative's Okinawan connection, it was thought that this would be a nice touchback on the character's background. Before the season began, she started training for her Sai Kata demonstration and took to carrying the weapons with her as what she called her comfort objects on set. Cobra Kai hasn't exactly shrunk from the implications of a bunch of teenagers engaging in rough-and-tumble karate rivalries, including the risk of serious injury, the season 2 finale ended with Miguel taking a fall that almost saw him paralyzed for life. But even pretend karate has its risks. During the climactic fight between Jacob Bertrand's Eli and Tanner Buchanan's Robbie, Eli was meant to throw a punch that Robbie would block upwards. During the take, however, he ended up blocking downward, guiding Eli's fist directly into his forehead. Sort of a karate version of an own goal. No, look out! No! What a mistake! Can you believe at the gooey center of Cobra Kai is the rivalry between Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence. When they met, Daniel was the poor outsider new to the valley, and Johnny was the country club teen and karate champion. When we catch up with the two former rivals, their fortunes have reversed, with LaRusso living in the hills and Lawrence struggling. What has remained is the core differences in their philosophies when it comes to karate and, by extension, life. While Lawrence has seen that there are issues with his former mentor's approach to karate and life, he still buys into the hard-edged philosophical underpinnings of the Cobra Kai principles like strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Lawrence's approach is aggressive, it doesn't wait. Miyagi-Do, on the other hand, is reactive and defensive, more about centering oneself. While the original series took a definite stand on which approach was best, Cobra Kai is more neutral on the subject, something that was the focus of this fourth season. The creators see Lawrence and LaRusso as opposite ends of the same side, and the journey of finding a balance between the two of them. The best way to underline that was to make their big showdown a draw, that there wasn't a better way, just different ways. As mentioned earlier, Karate Kid and Cobra Kai exist more as a karate fairy tale rather than an authentic karate tale. Having largely created the pop culture context of suburban karate, it firmly lives in that world. As a result, casting actual karate experts was not a high priority then or now. Neither Machio nor Zabka had any karate training prior to their career-making roles. Zabka did continue his karate training, making it halfway to his own black belt, owing mostly to his typecasting as a karate bully. Jacob Bertrand, Hawk, had actually trained in the martial arts from the age of eight, working his way up to a purple belt before switching over to grappling, made famous by MMA fights, both giving way to skateboarding as his teen sport of choice. Robbie's Tanner Buchanan took Taekwondo classes, which are popular across the U.S. in part thanks to movies like Karate Kid. He noted that he quit a few belts shy of a black belt, but had taken some Muay Thai in preparation for filming Designated Survivor. 
All Valley champ Miguel Torres actor Sholo Maridueña had only taken a year of community karate classes before getting cast in the show. The junior LaRusso Mary Mouser had no background before the show, but has become taken with karate since the show started. Jacob Bertrand talked to TV Vine about the process of filming Cobra Kai as well as his season 4 redemption arc, as he's gone from picked on Eli to bully Hawk and then back to Eli again, if a still slightly hawkish Eli. How does he get that tattoo to scream each time? Now, this season had a lot of fight vignettes in lieu of the massive rumbles of earlier seasons, which created the need for conditioning all during filming. Bertrand mentioned that the show's chiropractor, Dr. Dave, was on set every day resetting everyone throughout, something he said was sorely needed. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. Still waiting for Ralph Macchio's character to express his admiration for a blue Mustang on his dealership lot, a little throwback to his character Johnny from The Outsiders, do you think we could sell the creators on all Macchio roles being canon in the Miyagi-verse? Eh, probably not. 